<laughs> oh, hi. I didn't see you come in. Welcome to the newest episode of my podcast, That Thing with James J. Asher II, hosted by me, James J. Asher II. Now, before we jump into this episode, I want to give a little preface, tell on myself a little bit. This I, I interview someone who was, prior to the interview, a complete stranger to me. Uh, someone who not only lives in a different city, but in a completely different state than I do. Uh, and we conducted the interview via, well, Zoom, because that's what everyone uses this year. And, uh, well, prior to recording the episode, a uh, day before, I spent a good two and a half hours dicking around with software stuff to try to optimize the quality that I would get out of the video and especially out of the sound. Um, now, I, I recorded within the video chatting application itself, so the quality is limited. Uh, and also, um, my, my sound was up a little loud, so I've done what editing I can, but I apologize in advance for uh, the sound sound quality in this episode. Um, it's not up to par with the standard that I set for myself for this show, but it's listenable. I mean, it's it's there. Hopefully, it's hopefully it's listenable and watchable. But without further ado, here's episode seventy something. <laughs> okay here we go all right uh welcome to episode 70 something of that thing with james i'm your host james j asher the second and today i i'm having my first like a uh, zoom interview for the show uh and i have a guest i've never talked to before so, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Who are you, and what are you doing here? <laughs> hey, uh, I'm I'm Dan Klein, aka Psychic Dan from Podcast But Outside. Um, yeah, I'm here to talk about whatever we want to talk about. Wait, you were in Podcast But Outside? You're like a host? No, I uh, I was walking by. Uh, there's this new restaurant I was going to check out. This ramen place. And uh, I was on my way there, and I happened to roll past them. And they were like, hey, you want to sit down? <laughs> All right. How was that? What was it, it was like? weird, because... Oh, yeah, no, it was a blast. It was fun. <laughs> and it was weird, because the restaurant I was going to was right across the street. Like, direct line across. It was nuts. And you're just walking by, and it's like, are these Mormons or something sitting here? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh, they're recording something, you know, with, oh, podcast outside, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, Psychic Dan, how did you come to the, get that name? Is it just, like, fun? You just like the sound of it? What's up with uh, the psychic? You know, it's just uh, one of the things I do, and I'm Dan, so <laughs> I'm I'm also known as Comedy Dan. but Com um, Comedy Dan? But I kind of fell off. I I've taken a quick break from that uh, since COVID. I haven't been able to do any uh, live open mics or shows or anything like that. Um, you you were doing open mics pre pre pandemic. Yeah, I was doing some stand up comedy. Uh, I did some stand up when I still lived in New Jersey. Uh, I was on a couple shows. So it was fun. So, are you from New Jersey originally? Yeah, I lived there for. Um, 28 years or 27 years okay uh where in new jersey uh, northern new jersey morris county sort of like uh sort of near newark okay uh, i i used to live in central in bernardsville oh okay yeah it was just for four years though when i was a kid but yeah. <laughs> i know it, i'm a little familiar oh yeah <laughs> yeah uh so okay so you were doing stand up. How long like did you just get into it at like at the top of the year or had you been doing it for a while? Uh I always was interested in doing it, but I didn't 
have the opportunity because I don't have a car or anything for a while. And uh, you live in LA, right? Yeah, now I'm in LA. How how is it not having a car in LA? Oh no, I got a truck now, but I'm talking oh, like oh. Way, way back when when I first started. Okay. Uh, in like 2014, I just got a car. My mom's friend gave me this old fucking Hyundai Elantra for like 500 bucks, and I was ripping around in that thing. Uh, I took this comedy class, and the one guy was like, "Oh, you want to come to this open mic that I'm hosting?" I was like, "All right," and then I got hooked because I I did pretty good for my first time, and I was like, "All right." I'm going to keep doing this and took another class and the final exam was doing five minutes at Gotham in New York city. Yeah. Holy shit. Dude, that's fucking big. <laughs> so how, how old were you when you like first took the class? 23. Uh, what they teach in the, what do you how, like? What's in a stand up class? They're like, okay, these are a bunch of the stand ups. These are the types of humor that they do. Uh, this is the format, you know, set up, punch line. Uh, she would share Mark May, Mahern, Marin, Mark Marins. Mark Marin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. She used that as, like, educational material, and uh, yeah, it, was, it was fun. Like, uh, was there anything, like, specifically revelatory to you from the class on like how to structure a joke and shit like that uh not really because like i i was already watching a lot of stand-up and i just right. dissected it on my own it was like okay like you know i've heard this before i've heard that and but it, it helped me just put a little bit more structure to it because before that i wasn't putting anything down to paper i was just thinking stuff without writing it down and uh you know but then i took it more seriously right you think of it and then you get up there and it's like you know i'm just gonna fucking riff it's gonna be like it is in my brain and then you get up yeah. there and it's like totally fucking different <laughs> yep yeah originally i thought yeah. i could just go out there and start riffing and kill and yeah my riffing right off the bat was horrible <laughs> right <laughs> They're like, all right, uh, clearly you didn't think of this beforehand or anything. And, but some, like, eventually I got pretty, pretty good at it, but. Were you doing open mics like every week? Uh, when I started out, I was doing them like twice a month or something. And then, uh, I, uh, Sheba Mason, Jackie Mason's daughter reached out to me on Facebook and was uh, soliciting for shows. She was trying to bring in new comics, you know, to make money, have them, give them an opportunity. And of course, I it was a bringer show, you know what those are. Yeah, oh yeah. I, I had to bring like four or five people and it's it, those are so difficult to do because people are like, Dan, we're getting tired of this, like. Yeah. You know. I, I got into, like I've watched stand-up like forever but i actually started going to open mics last year uh and then speaking of like a comedy class so i, I was making a joke uh because i i act like I, I went to school for it and everything like i got a degree uh theater i've got a master's in theater and i was making a joke about like you know, spending six years and going into debt for that. And then, you know, my big highlight is getting a commercial for like some fucking herpes medicine. Oh, I was, yeah. yeah. And the fucking uh, host of this open mic here in Austin yeah. started cracking up. And in my head, I was like, oh, that wasn't that funny. Like I was getting to the punchline. But right after me, he just gets up there and just fucking, uh, it wasn't that funny. He just started saying, like, what a fucking loser. You fucking idiot. They're fucking robbing you. Why do you go to that? And oh, wow. he and he was talking, like, specifically in the context of, like, comedy or stand-up classes. Oh, uh, but it pissed me off just enough to say, fuck you. Fuck with this whole click here. I'm fucking done for a couple yeah. months. And then, and then a couple months grew, and then a fucking pandemic happened. So <laughs> good timing. Yeah. Yeah, he was just trolling, you know, like an idiot. A dude was a fucking asshole, and he wasn't even that funny, you know? That's what pisses me off the most. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. It depends on the crowd and stuff, you know. Yeah. But anyway, so um, so you were doing stand up. What what brought you to Los Angeles? Um, you know, okay, so come like you know mid uh, 2010s uh I, I felt this restlessness in new jersey and i'm like i gotta get the hell out of here yeah i gotta figure out a way but at, at the time you know i wasn't like working a good job i was pumping gas i wasn't saving really any money or anything right and then um i kind of put it in the back of my mind like oh, i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it and uh, then i got the opportunity uh last year i went to this is my friend jake who i like barely knew but it was cool to visit him and uh, uh i was like oh i'm just gonna move out here this place is cool and nice uh, so i was gonna stay with him and pay him some rent money and whatnot and then the i already got a job like i uh got a lance uh on indeed they hired me before i even went out there they're like all right you know just drive drive here fly whatever and the day before the kid jake's like oh no uh that's actually not going to be convenient um so you know you can't stay with me so i'm like fuck it i'm just gone i was like, <laughs> sleeping in my truck for a while <laughs> I, I just go to the gym shower you know it's all right it was cool it was before the pandemic too thank god but uh I was doing that for like a month and a half. I started doing these tennis meetups because I've been playing tennis since I was five. Mm. And uh, I met this lady, Linda, and she was like, Dan, my uh, family friend just moved out of uh, one of my son's old rooms. You can rent it if you want. So I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do that. And uh, one thing led to another, and I'm all set up. And the, the weirdest part, though, is that I had all these weird dreams before I uh, moved out here. I'd write them down like, oh, I don't know who that is. I don't know where this is. This is weird. That's weird. And I would end up in those situations with those people. Like, Do, do you remember any uh, details? Because I have that kind of shit too, man. Like, yeah. do you remember anything specific like from oh, the I, dreams? Oh, yeah. I remember like every detail. Uh, <laughs> I actually had a dream about being in Linda's house and uh seeing uh I, I saw her computer and the keyboard uh and like the, her couch set up and stuff like that and then when i walked into her den for the first time i was like oh yeah this is the place oh shit <laughs> it was, it's wild dude do you have a lot of those dreams man uh i used to like over like a 10 year period i would have them like maybe like twice a month or something more here and there and uh yeah then they just all started happening and uh i was like i guess i'm supposed to be out here then uh, right and it's not like it's not like uh deja vu because like you remember previously like dreaming about it i swear to god there's some french word for this where it's like you're having deja vu for something that you've already thought of before right it's like yeah. vuja vu or something. Oh. Yeah. Oh, speaking of deja vu, my neighbor just texted me. Okay, before, when I pulled up here, I was it's a little windy. I was like, oh, the wind, uh, wind's pretty bad. Uh, I hope this tree next to my truck doesn't fall down. My neighbor just texted me right now and goes, "New uh, tree down next to your new truck." Did it hit the truck? I don't. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Jay, you want to like? You want to pause this real quick, and I'll. I'll just go. I'm gonna go look, and I'll run back. Yeah, sure. I'll hit pause. All right. Hold, hold on. Hold. Oh. So, uh, what's up? Hold on. Popping the uh, the headphones back in. Okay. Uh. Wow. <laughs> so I walked out huge fucking the tree. Uh, my truck's sitting right there. The tree is next to it. The truck or the tree falls in the opposite direction and set on my truck. 
but oh. part of the some of the tree hit uh, the front of my truck and put, made this big dent in the side. Like I could, you know, I still drive it fine, but there's this dent. I talked to my neighbor and her and uh, the other, my other neighbor, Steve, were telling the city, like, you got to get those trees down. They're all going to fall, like move the tree, take them down. And they didn't. So she's like, yeah, you should just call the city and sue. You know, the, and, and, you know, they'll say, oh, we don't want to be sued. So maybe they'll just give me a settlement for the truck and be like, here, you know, pay uh, here because right. I'm financing it, too. So maybe they'll pay the whole thing off for me. Dude, talk about a windfall. <laughs> Damn. I mean, that sucks, but also potentially is OK. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I thought, oh, I should not like park next to the tree, but just because, you know, they've been telling them to cut it down and they didn't, and then that happens, sue them. You know, I'll, I'll take the little dent. That's all right. Yeah. Is it, uh, how big is the dent? Is it like major? Uh, no, it's not like that bad. I'll send you a picture. There's some scrapes. Oh, yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to talk to him about that. That's great. Uh, premonition right there what a trip <laughs> it's fucking crazy dude. it's the raccoon house tree yeah. <laughs> so uh tell me about the psychic stuff you do uh readings right oh yeah i do the readings i do uh one question uh a full tarot card reading i um I started off just doing that at first and then I'm like, you know, if I can read cards, you know, you can do readings for like anything. So I started doing stick readings, uh, banana peel readings, people, you know, those aren't as popular because people are like, you know, can I trust this? But then it's I like casting runes though, you know, yeah, it's the same principle. Yeah. So like, how did you get into that? Like, how did that start for you? uh with the tarot cards everything or yeah just like were you just like interested in tarot cards or like yeah how'd you get into it um yeah back in 2013 i was like well i've always been interested in tarot cards i should start practicing so i got a deck and started going at it and you know it's that took i figured out how to how to read it and then I, I saw a bunch of other psychics, you know, they're doing palm readings and they're like looking at this one. I saw this uh, one lady uh, in uh, February of 2019. I moved uh, here in March and she gave me a palm reading. She looks, she goes, oh, I see California. I go, what? You know, I wasn't even planning to move to California yet. She's like, yeah, I see California. And I was like, all right, well, I don't, you know, is that going to happen? Yeah, I had been thinking about it, but I didn't really tell anybody. So yeah. you'd been you'd been thinking about it before she saw it in your poem, or yeah, that I uh, I was planning to visit my friend, but I didn't like go there yet, and uh, uh, it was kind of up in the air. So I was like, all right, I definitely got to do it now. <laughs> I was gonna do it anyway, though, but yeah. So then, like, how did you... So you offer, like, paid readings online, right? Yeah. How did you get into that? Like, uh, was there some moment where you're like, I can make money doing this, or, like... Yeah, I did a bunch of them for friends, and they're like, oh, you know, this is good. Wow, you're accurate. That's and I'm like, all right, well, I could do this for sure. But I didn't want to charge at first, so I went on Reddit, and I was doing doing free readings racked up like 80 reviews and i'm like all right that's enough so I, I opened up an etsy shop and started doing them there and i would direct people i, I would say here look at my reviews here uh and then i started getting reviews on etsy and uh yeah so it's cool. nice i i mean i'll be honest i want to ask you for a reading but i don't want to like press it you know <laughs> yeah you know if you want to you can you know up to you would you be willing to do a reading on the show? Yeah, I could do that. Yeah? Yeah. Or if you're comfortable, I, I'd love to do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you want, the one question? 
Yeah, let's do one question. Alright, let me let me get all the decks. Okay. Wow, I still can't believe that tree thing. Yeah, you saw that, you guessed right, and it fell. <laughs> and now you might make some money from it. Unbelievable. Uh Has it just been like crazy windy all week or something out there? What's the weather like? Nah, no, just today. Uh, yeah, dude. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it was raining a little bit yesterday. Which uh, which one do you want to use? Uh, let's go with the classic Raider White. Okay. That seems to be everybody's favorite. Yeah. All right, uh, get the camera back here. This is exciting. Yeah, tarot reading, I'm suing the city. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great day. A literal windfall. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Uh, the birth of a litigation. Yeah. <laughs> Psychic Dan versus the state of Los, uh, County of Los Angeles. Uh, that's a good book title. <laughs> wow. That so sounds like something Hunter S. Thompson could write. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've never heard of him before, but I feel the vibe. Hunter S. Thompson? Uh, yeah. Uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? I've never heard of that before. Oh, okay. It's a it's a book. Yeah. Oh, okay. Please choose. Uh, middle. Okay. What's your question? Um. Advice on like, what do I need to know or accept, in general? Uh. Okay. Um, okay. The, um, the eight of coins, eight of pentacles. Uh, I think what you need to accept the most, I think you're already aware of this, is that, uh, to reach success is just a lot of hard work and it has to do with just, you know, time and you keep hammering away and have faith in what you're doing. Um, you know, you can see the guy here, he's hammering this, uh, looks like a little like railroad, uh, you know, spike into the, the coin, you know, that's you, you're just working away, and, you know, you know, like, right now, you're, like, there, but then you keep doing it, you'll see all the coins come, so I think that you just need to keep hammering away, keep having at it, and uh, have faith in the process, and uh, also, you know, you need to have passion in what you do, so... Uh, as long as you're enthusiastic about it and, uh, you know, people can tell when your heart's in it, when your heart isn't in it, and, and uh, they, they feed off that. So, yeah. That feels very right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, I'm, glad. I'm glad that it resonated. Uh, okay, so... So you started doing like stick readings and stuff too, just out of curiosity. Oh yeah. Stick readings. The stick readings are fun. So how do so you collect some sticks, you throw them, and then you let that like guide your intuition? Is that how that works? Yeah, I take a two mile hike up the road to uh the woods on this road called Dixie Canyon, because around, you know, LA there's barely any woods. So I got to hike there. I just put a bunch of sticks in three different bags. You choose the bag that you want. And then I go in my backyard and I pick a specific spot. Because along with reading the sticks, I also will read like where the sticks are laying, like an overlay of it. So mm. right now uh, in my backyard, the grass, some of it is going dormant. So it's like tan here, green there. And I'll pick a spot and throw it. And then it'll re relate to something. Because... 
like for example there's this one girl and this spot and threw us uh, to, uh uh, well, lo looked like Florida, and I was like, "All right, you know, you're in Florida right now." Yeah, you know, I just, I just said it because I saw that, and it t she actually does live in Florida. <laughs> so I was like, "All right." Uh, so you didn't know it prior. You just, <laughs> it just happened right. that way. Yeah, I just, I just read the sticks on the ground. I was like, you know, peninsula. It looks like Florida. Okay, you're in, you're in Florida then. And she's like, "Yeah, I'm in Florida." Holy shit! So, how many reviews do you have online? Uh. On Etsy, I think I have like 25. I had a lot on Reddit, but I deleted uh, the thread by accident. Oh, but, fuck. You know, fucking shit happens. I, I couldn't retrieve it, so I, Etsy reviews are fine. I'll just keep, keep doing that. Are you on Reddit a lot? Uh, I get notifications for certain groups, but I'm not really on there as much. Uh, uh, I, like what I would research on Reddit, I go on like YouTube for, or I'll go on right. Discord. Yeah, Reddit's pretty good for uh, researching shit that you're not going to just find on Google. It's like a uh, more refined search. Like you make your search at like uh, whatever Reddit, put that into Google, and then you'll find some thread. And then there's other people who've curated links for you. Isn't that oh, yeah. sweet? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I spend a lot of time on there. I'm, I'm fucking bored. <laughs> I'm yeah. so tired of being inside all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I go outside I, as much as I can. Oh, what were you saying? How's the pandemic affecting your life? Uh, it didn't affect my job. It, it The only thing it affected is just fun. I can right. go out uh, uh, People go out and they do the, you know, the open tables at restaurants and stuff like that. But I don't do that. I'm still like a little sketched out about that. And uh, the the other thing is too is that I don't really, I don't have like too many friends around here. Uh, my friends live a little bit down south, and like when I go out, it's usually just me, and I'll just see whoever I see and talk to them. But some of these restaurants like on a friday night you know they're trying to pack the tables and they just have me there alone they're like oh no we can't do you so, <laughs> so like, assholes I, I, I can't even eat anywhere unless i'm taken out i, I did that at this place called sushi dan's <laughs> psychic dan it's sushi dan's yeah i was like i gotta go there so i go I, yeah, just me. And the guy looks at me like he didn't say anything, but I could tell he was like, uh, "Yeah, we're not gonna do you. You're just one person. Forget it." And, and he's like, "Okay, what's your phone number?" He wrote down my phone number and shit. And you know damn well he was like, "Oh, the one guy. Fuck him." So I like waited for 15 minutes, but yeah. judgy motherfuckers. Really? <laughs> I mean, you know, I can I can relate. They're trying to you know make the max dollar and. Yeah. yeah yeah so have you made a, a lot of new friends in la since we're moving out there uh not regular friends well linda my landlord friend there's her she's probably my closest friend right now and uh there was this other guy uh i have a friend i don't hang out with him really because he's you know he's i don't have any business with him right now but mm. uh one time i went to the sushi place uh I, I was going to go to this place called Crave, and I was like, nah, the hell with Crave. Uh, I went to this other place, the Dojo, and I get sat at the bar right next to this these, this guy and this girl. They're both wearing uh, black and white jackets, and I'm like, oh, they must be like a cute couple or something. So sit down next to them, and the guy was drinking a little bit. He was, you know, opening it up, relaxing, and we kept looking at each other. I wanted to say something. He wanted to say something, but we kept looking, didn't say anything. And finally, he's like, hey, you know, what's going on? And, uh, <laughs> turns out his, his, his name's Eiler Young. And uh, he's like, yeah, I was named after the saxophone player, Albert Eiler, from the uh, 70s or 60s, whenever it was. And I was like, oh, that's cool. He's like, yeah, you probably like him. Check him out. He's, what do you do? I'm like, landscaping. And he's like, oh, uh, gardener, landscape architect. Uh, yeah. He's like, well, I just moved here. And uh, I wanted to do like a little gardening job in my backyard. And uh, 
you know, put some flowers in and stuff if you want to help me out. I was like, all right. Uh, he's like, yeah, I got my own clothing line, Philip Eiler. And I was like, oh, I've never, I haven't heard of that before. Uh, but then afterwards, before I went there the next day on, um, it was Labor Day, actually. And uh, he, I didn't know he was this like famous jacket designer. He sells like $1,500 jackets to like, some like celebrities and people. And, this dude's famous? Like, I'm going to look this guy up. Uh, Philip Eiler, you said? Uh, uh, you're breaking up a bit. Young though, but I went over there. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. What was the uh, guy's name again? All right. Phil Philip Eiler is the clothing line, and his okay. name is Eiler Young. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, this is another situation where I had a dream about going to this sushi place. And seeing him, and then it actually happened. So you had a dream before that happened, where you just meet some rando. Yeah, like weeks before, and I, I, I didn't have a dream about going to his house. It was just meeting him at the the sushi bar. But yeah, we went to Home Depot, picked out a bunch of plants. Uh, <laughs> I cleaned out his pots for him, planted the set. He paid me handsomely. Fuck yeah. yeah. I was like, you don't have to do this. He's like, nah, nah, I'm trying to help you out. Try to start, you know, start a, start your life. Let's do this. I'm like, wow, you're, you're the man, dude. Hell yeah. Uh, like, what are some of the weirdest, like, I don't know, things that have happened to you? Like any synchronicities or just fucking bizarro things that have happened to you since you moved out there? Um, yeah, no, a lot happens for sure. Uh, the weirdest thing that's happened yet um uh there was one where i ended up uh i had this premonition where i ended up at a party of jason stratum no shit uh oh okay this was the weirdest thing that's happened thus far uh, you know that comedian liza koshi yes okay so i discovered her youtube channel in 2016 and um like the day for the next like week i had these weird dreams with her there's one where i was at this restaurant with her and i went to an open mic and then there was another one where she had this panel for uh, a tv show and she was up there with this black dude and this lady and um they're talking about their show or whatever and i'm sitting there like i'm off to the right you know if you're looking from the stage i'm off to the left and um She's talking, she's like, you know, we've all learned lessons before, right? And then she scans the room from right to left and stops right on me. And we're just looking at each other for like 30 seconds. Like, like, do I know you? You know, like, what's going Like, what do I say? Do I say something? And I was like, hey, uh, I was like, I'm Dan. And I like spelling my name in vegetables. And I don't know why, why the fuck I said that. And she's like, oh, okay, we'll bring you backstage after. And I was like, what the fuck? So, uh, three years later, I come out here, I go to VidCon last, uh, June or July, whenever the fuck it was. And sure enough, she has this YouTube series that she came out with called Lies on Demand. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to go to the panel. I go to the panel. I sit in the same exact spot I was at in this dream. And I'm like, all right, you know, let's see what happens. And, uh, Dude, I swear to God, like 30 seconds before it starts, everybody around me in my row clears out. So it's just me right there, like for like 20 feet around me. And I'm like, all right, this is weird. You know, she starts doing the panel and everything like that. And at one point, same thing. She She's like, oh, we've all learned lessons, right? Scans the room from right to left. And we just make direct eye contact for like, 30 seconds and we're just like looking at each other like what you know, what's going on but i didn't say anything i was like i don't want to be that obnoxious asshole you know or anything like why am i gonna scream from the crowds but yeah it was surreal dude i was like wow you know, oh shit that's fucking wild man <laughs> why the hell did everyone clear out around you <laughs> i don't know dude it was like god willing or something i was yeah. like whoa uh, this is this is just creepy at this point but yeah cool. 
any other stuff like any uh you said you were at a party with jason statham the yeah, english yeah. action movie star yeah yeah jason Statham. okay so this this started off of a dream i went to this italian restaurant called maggiano's this is before i was in la and i'm sitting there and i hear this girl talking behind me i look it's this asian lady um and she's sitting there with her friend and they're talking i felt like drawn to talk to her for some reason so i was like hey you know hey uh you look kind of familiar uh can i sit down with you guys so she's like yeah sure and i sat down with them and they're like yeah what do you do what's going on i do landscaping it's fun i just moved out here and uh i was like oh you know we should like exchange numbers in case something fun comes up you know not trying to like get a date with her but just you know like who knows you know some funky might happen and uh that dream ended and then i had another one where i was in this pitch black vehicle which makes sense now because you know when i first came out here i was sleeping in my truck right so i'm in this vehicle i got this call from a chris and i'm like who the fuck's chris i forgot about it <laughs> and it's, this, it's this lady she's like hey it's chris i'm like i'm like chris who are you she's like oh from from maggiano so i was like oh no shit and she's like hey you know dan i there's this party that's gonna happen and um i i want you to come and you know, i thought it'd be cool and i'm, I'm like yeah hey, all right you know she's like i want to introduce you to some people i'm like cool yeah so i go to this party and uh you know i don't have any fancy clothes i, I was wearing a dress shirt but i'm like i remember i walk in i'm like oh yeah i thought this was like for casual right and, uh, <laughs> So she's like, I want to introduce you. This girl's name Rosie. I'm talking blonde hair, blue eyed girl with a British accent. I'm like, oh, you're cool. And she's like, yeah, yeah, meet my husband, Jason. And I'm like, oh, shit, it's the guy from the movies. Huh. Uh, that's cool. So yeah, I talked to some other person and that ended. And then I moved out here and eventually I went to this Italian restaurant named Maggiano's. And at the time, I didn't really, I kind of forgot about it. I wrote it down, though, because it mm -hmm. seemed significant for some reason. I heard this voice behind me, like, sounds, like, familiar, like somebody I know. So I look, it's this Asian lady with her friend, and I'm like, oh, I got to talk to her. You know, I got to say hi and, you know, see what happens. You know, it might not, it might, but, got and I was just, I drank like three cups of coffee. I was all like frazzled out. <laughs> I'm like, shit, I'm nervous. Like my hands were sweating. I'm like, shit. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> One thing like, they're, like, they were looking at me like, okay, he wants to say something, but he's not. They're like, the lady was like putting her hand out, like, you know, come over. I, I got all like nervous. I just left. I didn't say anything to them, but. Oh, um, man. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, I should have, you know, what's the worst that's going to happen is gonna be, they're going to be like, nah right yeah you know, we don't want to talk to you but it would have been cool to see if anything happened that's fucking wild it doesn't it uh it doesn't it suck what coffee does to you <laughs> does like do you get anxiety a lot oh yeah i try to stay away from caffeine yeah oh, yeah when i drink coffee i'm all like frazzled i'm whoa uh yeah. i had a friend recently ask me do you do you ever think your anxiety might just be like high uh, intuition? I think maybe because like she invited me to go to like some like DJ thing like a week ago. And I said, yeah, sure. Uh, and then the morning of, I was just not feeling good about it. Uh, it just felt something felt wrong. So I was like, yo, I don't know if it's like uh, my anxiety or uh, what I, I don't. I hope I'm not being a flake, but I don't want to go to this thing. It doesn't feel right. Well, a week later, she tests positive for COVID. Ooh. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Luckily, it's not like super severe for her, but I don't know. Okay, so if you got it, it could be severe. Correct. Or I could give it to somebody else, and I wouldn't want that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. So did like, did a lot of people like, did traffic die down in LA? Cause I live in Austin and for 
like over the past month traffic has returned to normal but like since like the quarantine and everything it was like no traffic which was actually yeah. very nice was it oh, similar yeah. out there oh my god it was phenomenal <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. for like two months dude i would drive down to work no cars on the road and then i'd go back nothing and i was like wow but normally it would take me like yeah, you know, like 40 minutes driving in just bumper to bumper traffic. And now it would take like 15. I'm like, all right, I could live like this forever. Right. Like, uh, like I'm sure it'll take like, like 40 minutes to go like four or five miles, maybe. Yeah. It's right. Crazy. Is it the same out there? Cause it's kind of how it is here. Oh yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. So, uh, like what's your favorite thing about living out there? Uh, I love this, the town that I live in, uh, Sherman Oaks. Um, okay. I just love, I love living out here cause it's like, it's not the, the crazy hustle and bustle, you know, like flashy, everybody's dressed up all the time and, and shit of like Hollywood area, mm-hmm. but it's, it's like more like casual, you know, people are chilling, uh, you can like talk to people aren't as uppity up here. I feel like, Mm -hmm. uh, although I have seen like, all right, this, this morning, this stone guy's passing me while I'm sleeping (laughs) and he has his daughter with him. I'm like, look at this fucking dude. (laughs) He walks past me and he's talking to his daughter. He's like, Hey, I have a friend that I want you to meet. I know I have a friend. His name's Joe. Turn around and say hi to Joe. Like, as me, like, trying to make me the butt of a joke. You know, like, I'm, I'm a Joe because I'm, like, sleeping or whatever. Yeah. And the, the girl turns around and says, hi, Joe. I'm looking at him. I didn't say anything, but I'm looking at him, like, I'm like, watch yourself, motherfucker. Yeah, like, you know, not like, cool, dude. dude. <laughs> yeah, like, I, you learn, like, okay, my job's, you know, I value my job over, like, trying to react to this guy. So I just, you know, I didn't say anything. I'm just, yeah, you know, it hurts a little. You're like, oh, well, yeah. yeah, but it's not that bad. Yeah. I know, dude, I've, I've done, I've had landscaping jobs. I've had janitor jobs. I've had, I've had shit jobs and it sucks when someone looks down on you like that. It's like, motherfucker, I'm the one making sure your area's clean. I'm cleaning up your side of the street, motherfucker. Yeah, you're a vital <laughs> piece of the community, and uh, yeah. you know people want to make jokes about it. But you know, on, on the one hand, if I was at a stand-up show and somebody said that to me, I'd probably laugh. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll just look at it like it's a stand-up show. You know, he's yeah, busting my balls or whatever. Uh, but my first reaction is pretty extreme. I'm like, oh, you'll get your. <laughs> it's I, coming. Have you ever Have you ever been in a fist fight? No, never. Yeah. Me um, neither. The closest that I came was back in um, si- seventh grade. Uh, me and my friends would have these things we'd call pine cone wars. We'd go to <laughs> elementary school and just hurl pine cones at each other. One time, my friend point blank just whipped one at my face, cut my lip like the joke. Oh, just fuck. And I got really pissed. I was like, what the fuck? I started throwing him like on the ground. And <laughs> he thought I was going to like come at him. But I was like, nah, I was like just pissed off. And But for the next like week, I had this big gash of my lip. So. Oh, man. I, is there anything you miss about New Jersey? Um, no traffic. Uh, I don't really miss a lot because there weren't as many people there and Around here, there's just, there's so many people, like beautiful women everywhere. Oh yeah, uh, I bet. In New Jersey, it was like, you know, like one out of like eighty, but out here, it's just like one out of one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty similar here too. I moved here from small town in Oklahoma, and it's I feel that yeah for sure. <laughs> so what was what the fuck was I gonna say? Oh yeah, why? So why didn't you like go to New York? You're closer. Um, 
I just did, I didn't feel like that was right for some reason. I was like, LA, dude. Uh, all right, here's here's another reason. So I've had this weird like fascination with California since I was a kid. Um, there was this period when I was like eight where I had this like fascination with maps, and I would come up with these names of people, and I would say, okay, she's moving to California from here. And this one's moving there. And at the time, like, I was dead serious about it. Like, these people were re- like, this was actually going to happen. But then, like, a couple of years later, I was like, ah, it's just, pr- I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. Turns out these people are like real people. And, like, I know who they are. What? I would, yeah, I would have these dreams of these, like, I had dreams of these people before I did that when I was like six or something. So I'm like, all right, that one's gonna come there, that one's there. And now they're like they became famous YouTube people. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, so all right. To be specific, I would be like, okay, uh Elizabeth is gonna move from Texas to California. I go, okay, Ashley and Joshua already are in California. Uh Lily is gonna come from Canada to California. And I was like, Mariah is going to come from Massachusetts to California. And I, like This stuff was just stuff. coming to you, right? These are just people I like met in dreams. You know, I had no idea who the fuck they were. And dude, I like, okay, Liza Koshy, you know, I had all these other dreams about her and shit. So it made sense because she moved to California from Houston. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, that other YouTuber, Superwoman, Lily, came from Canada to California. And uh, Poppy, Mariah, came from Massachusetts to California. And the two security guards at my job who I befriended, Ashley and Joshua, are both in California and uh, L.A. So it's not like only celebrities. It's just like but, but people. people. With. Yeah. Huh. Have you... Have you ever had any dreams or premonitions about like me or this this podcast? Um, it's okay if you haven't. I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd I'd say so. Uh, it, just seeing your face, your fa- you look familiar. So, tell me, it just it just a feeling. Yeah. This, oh. like, I'll have to look at my notebook later, but uh, just, just the, the face f- seems familiar. I had that happen with you know podcasts, but outside too. Like I had a dream where I was looking at Cole, and uh, at one I was looking at Cole. And... Dude, I, speaking of like weird fucking events, I just remembered one, and it has just bugged me ever since. Uh, so I was working at this place here in Austin called. Uh, alamo draft house um i think they do they have those in la you know about alamo draft house uh I it's like seen any, but it's like one of those movie theaters where they like you can order food and like booze and shit while you're watching the movie it's like one of those kind of things well i was a restaurant movie, a restaurant movie yeah and i was a food runner at this place on sixth street which is kind of like what austin wants to consider it's bourbon street it's most definitely not bourbon street but it's like the party street for all the fucking drunk assholes (laughs) and uh so i was working on that street during uh i think it yeah it was during the south by southwest i am maybe 20 2013 or 14 i don't remember which but like I, i i worked like doubles for like two weeks straight i had maybe like a day off it was hell and yeah dude and uh, a lot of a lot of people from california really like to treat you like a fucking slave when you're bringing their food oh yeah those dicks dude yeah the hoity-toity you know the people somebody's who think they're somebody so i (laughs) yes uh and so i'm like uh, near the end of South by Southwest, it's like two week event, just fucking work, 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 run, 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 run. 
uh, just physically, mentally, emotionally, just worn out. And I, I parked like maybe a half mile away because there's like free parking away, sort of away from a lot of the craziness. And I'm just like sort of in a daze uh, just because yeah. it's kind of like shell shock almost. I, I had some sort of PTSD after that hell week, hell two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm walking and, uh, you know, I'm on uh, East 6th walking eastward just sort of in a daze walking against just this like mass like sea of people walking to other venues and i'm walking through and my eyes just lock on and make contact with this other dude who i have never before seen in my life and only way i can describe him i've never seen him before anything and uh he didn't look like Woody Allen, but I would describe him as like having sort of like a Woody Allen vibe. Just kind of like a short, nervous Jewish guy with like these cool round glasses. He makes eye contact and he, and he looks at me and like grins and just kind of uh, in a be humored way, shakes his head and says, oh, James. And we keep walking past each other. I had never seen this guy before in my life. I've never seen him again. I swear to God, it wasn't a fun... I, I've done a lot of acid, so I know what's real and what's not. That guy was fucking real. So I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, like... Lo- if I, All right. So if I was going to come at that from like a logical angle at first, I'd be like, maybe he knew somebody <laughs> and you were the waiter or something right. like that. But... Now, on, on the other hand, I have had that exact same thing happen where I'll just like know somebody's name or so, like I'll know their birthday or something like that. Where they tell, you know, he probably, he was just, you know, in his zone, dude. She's like, I'll just, you know, maybe, guy or something. Maybe. I I heard this described like a year or so ago, but any kind of like stuff we'd consider supernatural, someone described it as future science. I kind of like that. What do you think? Future yeah. science? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think it's along the same lines as like quantum physics. Hmm. And uh, I think that we're more connected than people think um, because not in like, it's not even in like a romantic like weird kind of way it's just like mundanely we're all connected to each other Mm. uh i i mean you know like all right it sounds crazy but like i could pick up on people in the neighborhood from just like sitting in my room like i've predicted crimes before uh there there's this one time i was walking from my truck back into my uh house and i was like i was like yeah i'm gonna go um I'm going to go check out the uh, neighborhood psychopath tonight or something like that. And I, I had this urge to just like walk down the road to, to like this area for no, and I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm probably just imagining shit. Forget it. So I go inside the next day. I talk, I get home from work. I talk to my neighbor, Tom, helped him out in his yard and stuff. And he goes, oh, did you hear what happened uh, last night? I was like, no, what what was going on? He goes, oh, there's these uh, car thieves. They uh, got into this guy's uh, fancy Ford F-150 and, like, drove down the road and took all of his shit. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah. Uh, What they do (laughs) is um, when, when you're in your car and you lock it, your remote sends out this tiny radio signal. And what these thieves will do, they'll have like a computer set up with the radio signal and they'll catch the signal and they'll uh, program it on a dummy remote and they could just, you know, unlock your car, go inside. And if it's a push to start car, you know, Mm -hmm. you don't even need a key. And uh, so like, yeah, I, I was like drawn, I was probably drawn to like go where this guy was camping out because he he was right down the road from me on this uh, the side road so i was like oh shit you know i i could have gone down there and been like you know maybe like looked at him and like scared him off like you would get paranoid or something but i don't know it's it's weird it seems like it doesn't even come from me it's like something outside right. of me is like yeah 
It doesn't you're, make sense. Right? You're like a receiver, just picking up the radio waves. Yeah, I'm just a channel. I'm like, oh, I'm here. I'm 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 seeing I'm seeing a show. Psychic Dan, future cop. He predicts crime and stops it in its tracks before it happens. It's uh, a possibility. Uh, <laughs> I'll write it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you if you need any. <laughs> I wrote this uh, comedy screenplay and submitted it to a contest, and I kind of rushed through it. I just banged out 22 pages in like three days or something and didn't really look at it. But I got to the quarterfinals. So Fuck I like, yeah. All right, I, I must be onto something. I'm like, I, I need to chop it up or whatever and get back to it. Do you, uh, do you write often? Do you like journal or just creative write, shit like that? Almost all of my stuff is based off something that happens in reality. So mm -hmm. I'll just wait for something weird to happen in my job and then write it down. Dude, that's the Seinfeld method. Never fails. Yeah. Reality is yeah. fucking weird. Yeah, like that was what it was all based on. My job it was called security. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, I, it was pretty funny. They, they must have sort of liked it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's see. I think we've been going for about an hour, right? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about calling the city and uh, seeing about that lawsuit settlement I couldn't get into. Oh yeah, it's still afternoon there. It's dark here. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, well, Dan, thanks for being on the show. James, I appreciate the opportunity, and, and uh, yeah, you know, I'd love to do it again sometime if that opportunity ever comes up. Hell yeah, I'd love to have you. It's been real. Anything you want to plug for viewers uh, or listeners? My Etsy, www.etsy.com slash shop slash Psychic Dan. Psychic Dan spelled P-S-Y-C-H-I-C Dan. I will be sure to include that on uh, the show notes, on the description. Uh, do you have any like social media or anything you want to promote? Uh, I got an Instagram. It's dank zero nine one six. I mean, <laughs> I don't post too much on there. It's just like random. Like I, I posted a video of this like dog at the laundromat. Uh, <laughs> it's, it doesn't really have any direction. But if you want to follow me, that'd be cool. Uh, I got another Instagram, psychic underscore Dan. You could check that out. Uh, yeah, you know, again, I don't really post too much. You should probably uh, post some like forecast or something. <laughs> yeah, get on that. Uh, it's gonna be cloudy next week. <laughs> yeah, with a chance of uh, a B and E at your house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. Uh, it's been great. Thanks again for being a guest, and uh, good luck with the uh, the litigation. <laughs> Hi, James. Thank uh, you. Uh, take care, man. You too. Bye. Okay. Uh, I guess this is still recording, hopefully. Uh, so, yeah. Um, for some context, I suppose. I, I, I was watching this show I like to watch on YouTube. And in this show, the hosts talk to just random people passing by on the street and uh, the person that I just interviewed on this show happened to talk to the host. He was just passing by. They talked to him, um, and I was like, what's this What's this dude about? Like, something... This guy seems like a character. Uh, and then it comes out that he does psychic readings, and uh, he goes by Psychic Dan. And I was like, is this guy for real? Is this fucking real? So I looked it up, and sure enough, Psychic Dan is real, as you just saw or, or heard. And uh, so I, I found him on Instagram and followed him. And he was like, hey, are, did you find out about me through this other show? And I was like, yeah. And he said, I see you have a show. Uh, I, I'll be a guest if you'd have me. And so here we are. So, Dan, thanks again for coming on to the show. Um for the viewers or listeners, 
thank you as always for tuning in. If you want to help support the show, if you're, if you're able to, um, it would be greatly appreciated. You can become a monthly donor, a patron at patreon.com slash that thing with James. Uh, and thank you to my current patrons. You guys rock. I greatly appreciate your continued support and faith in the show. Uh, man, the eight of eight of pentacles man i've really been thinking about that because i've just been feeling dragged down like honestly i've been feeling kind of dragged with this show and like i haven't been writing and stuff like i really want to so often and uh yeah that spoke to me just continue fucking grinding james reminder to yourself continue fucking grinding and you viewers if you have something you're passionate about uh it's a long fucking path i i, I i'm an example of that uh keep fucking grinding you know and uh get creative with the tools you have at your disposal you know take what opportunities present themselves yeah yeah uh well I, I I think I'm gonna go play the new Watch Dogs game. That watchdog is calling my name. Again, if you want to donate, patreon.com slash that thing with James. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. My handle is at James J. Asher. Uh thank you. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. YouTubers like, comment, and for all of you, share the show with literally every person you know. Like at all of your friends list everybody your family strangers get everyone to follow the show all right get the more the merrier uh well thanks for tuning in this is episode 70 something nine i guess of that thing with james j asher the second i love you goodbye see you next time <laughs>